Hey everyone, my name is Donald and in this video we're going to show you how to add new events to your website using the Modern Events Calendar add-on with ThemeCo. So once you're on your dashboard, go ahead and navigate to the All Events underneath of the ME Calendar. And from there you're going to be able to see all of your events that you currently have on your website. From the top we're going to click Add Event. From there we're going to go ahead and give the event a title. So Let's do WordCamp Expo Conference. WordCamp Conference, let's do that. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of text to the actual event. All right, from there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give the event a start time uh, and date. Let's do October 12th and it's going to end on October 14th and they're going to be all day events. So we can also add an hourly schedule here if we know what the the schedule of the events going to be and you can just go ahead and add that here, the start time, the end time, the title and a description. And you can add multiple ones there if you want to go ahead and do that. Uh, let's add a new location. All right, so I'm going to add a location called uh, Town Hall. Now this is why it's important to have your Google Maps API key because if you don't, then you won't be able to have, um, then you won't be able to have your Google Maps API being pulled into your site so that you won't be able to have a Google map on the actual site. Um, I'm going to go ahead and insert my API key just so we can go ahead and continue with this. All right. And let's go ahead and do that underneath the settings and underneath of the Google map settings. Let's go ahead and add that and I'm going to change this to 15. Okay, from there, let's go ahead and save our event and we're going to refresh it. Okay, so once it refreshes, we should now see our Google Maps uh, being able to add a time and things of that nature. So let's insert a new location and we're going to name this Town Hall and this is going to be 1234 at this address. You put in the whole address. I'm just doing a test address. Um, the event link and the more info. So the event link is basically if you want to show someone that you have an event, but you don't want them to visit a single event page on your website, but rather have them visit the actual event through the actual website or the company who's hosting the event, then you would put that underneath of the event link section. If you want to just give them more information, such as like a PDF or then link to a third party site from your single event page, then that is where you would put it under the more information. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this as an example. Let's do the more info. We're going to link to here. And the more information, we're going to go ahead and put click here for more info. And I want to open it up in a new tab. The event organizer, you can add a new one here. The name, phone number, email, and a link to their page. Uh, I'm just gonna hide that for now. And the event cost, don't get this confused with them being able to purchase a ticket with your website. The event cost is simply just telling them if the event costs money. They won't actually be able to book through your website if you put it in the event cost, just so you know. Underneath of the booking part, however, is where you can go ahead and make it so they can purchase tickets for your for your event. Um, so if you have an unlimited amount of tickets, you can do that. If not, you can just add however many you, you're able to sell. For the tickets, you can add them here, a ticket name. So let's do general admission. And for the ticket price, we're gonna name that, or we're gonna put $10 in there. And a description is, this is a description. So you can see what it looks like on the front end. Now let's add another one for seniors. 
and we're going to make this five dollars so there's two different options that you can add uh, to your cart for tickets now remember this is not done through woocommerce uh, this is basically everything is through the actual calendar plugin you do not need woocommerce installed in order for people to purchase tickets on your website it's very common for event plugins to have that happen now there is a woocommerce integration but right now we're just going to go ahead and stick with um, just a straight purchasing tickets um, the booking form so there's basically different options you can add uh, and for different fields that they have to fill out in order to book your services for or book your ticket um, and you would just be able to inherit from global options or you can add it on a per um, per event basis down here all right so from there we have all of that information filled out the featured image I would go ahead and say yeah you can add one um, I would make it like a banner size and I wouldn't make it small because if you make it small it doesn't look right on the front end so I would recommend maybe I don't know 900 by 400 minimum keep it like I said keep it banner option sized just so it looks better um, anything tall like these won't look that great because it'll push all of your content down um, and I would suggest keeping them all the same height so let's go ahead and let's just pick this one all right, so the event color, basically, this is basically going to be whatever the color of the different items on the event is going to be. It's great to stick with the theme color if you want. There are different options that you can choose that are default. Okay, so here. Uh, you can add new categories. So let's just go testing event. And, of course, you can tag it up here. So let's go ahead and update this. At the top, we can go ahead and view the event. So this is going to show us a single event page for this event. Alrighty, so this is what it looks like. Basic, how it is, the uh, featured image, the date, time, the cost, and the more information. So click here for more info. It'll open up in a new tab. And then, of course, we have our register button, the share event, and there's a uh, actual... Um, add to calendars down here as well as a countdown and here are the booking modules okay this is all the information that we put in for the actual conference and here is the name of the conference or the name of the event so if we click register it takes us down here to the registration event form where we can go ahead and add that and then we can go ahead and say general description for the general admission we want two tickets and we have one senior we go ahead and click next and we have our name and our email and then we can also make it so that the other tickets can be put in those persons those people's names um, we hit next and we have our payment options now i only have pay locally checked and that is all done through your settings underneath of the payment gateways. So if we go into the payment gateways, we'll be able to check different options. So we have PayPal, we have uh, Stripe, and we have by Pay by WooCommerce. So if I go ahead and save those changes, we'll be able to see those enabled on the front end right here. Locally, PayPal Express, Stripe, WooCommerce, things of that nature. So there's different options that you can choose from for payments. And you just put in all of your API keys here, um, your business account for PayPal here. And if you want them to pay at the door, you have that option right here as well. Once they are at this section, they can go ahead and hit pay. Once they fill in their information, it'll take them to that source if it's uh, such as PayPal. And they'll go ahead and fill in their information and it'll redirect them back to your site. Once they're finished doing all of that, it should send you a notification um, letting you know that there's a new booking, and it'll also send them a notification. To see all of your bookings, there is a section right here called Bookings on the left-hand side of your admin menu, and you'll be able to find all of your uh, bookings for your events underneath this page. 
It'll let you know if they paid, what event they um, purchased for, uh, their names, their contact information, etc. So that's where you can go ahead and add a new event to your site. And you can see all of the events here. And you'll be able to do that. Now there is a little trick. If you don't want to edit with visual or text, you can actually edit this content with Cornerstone. And I've done this uh, on another site. So in order to do this, you go ahead to Pro and Settings. Navigate to Allow Post Types and Type in Events. And click Update. Navigate back to your event that you have right here and you'll have a new pro tab so go ahead and start editing with pro it's a little bit of a different interface because it's a smaller area that you're editing in um, but basically it's the same I would personally say take off all of your padding on the sections and I would also say underneath your row go ahead and turn off the um, inner container right there so that way it's full width and then from there you can go ahead and add your elements so you can add a headline you can add a text element you can add a button if you so choose so there's a bunch of different options that you can do there instead of editing in plain text once you hit save, you can go ahead and launch that so that you can actually see your changes. It's a great integration with Cornerstone already. Um, and I'm sure you guys are going to have a bunch of fun making your events. My clients love the way these events look. And you can always change the way these look. So this blue is part of that styling part that I chose earlier in the settings in the other video. And you can, of course, add and remove any of these if you want. Um, there's a, definitely a bunch of settings that you could choose from for this. If you guys have any questions, please let me know in the comments below, and I will see you at the next one.